Hi there, my name's Charlotte Reeves. I'm from Unleashed Education and you've tuned in to another editing toolbox video where we share a quick tip, trick or technique to help you improve your pet photography editing life. So this time I'd like to talk about using Lightroom's very powerful and very handy masking features, including gradients. To show you just how quickly you can improve your images using these tools, I've put together five images from our recent workshop that we held in New Zealand a few weeks ago. So this was a very gloomy afternoon. The shoot actually ended up getting rained out towards the end. So the light was very, very soft and I went for a lot more of a moody feel than I normally do in my images. So that's why you'll see the bit of a discrepancy of styles here, not what you're used to seeing from me. So to help enhance the moody look, I like to use the masking tools in Lightroom to do something I call painting with light. So all of these images I've had are edits that cover the basics. So everything here on the basic adjustment panel, exposure contrast, white balance, all of these tonal adjustments, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, presence, tone curve, all that kind of thing. So if we were to look at the raw image here of Benson, that's what the raw image looks like and those are the changes that I've done so far. Now the image is okay, it's got some potential, but I really think we can enhance the lighting in this image with some selective shading and lightening of certain areas and that's where the masks come in. So to access the masking, you just need to press this little icon here. You can also press Shift W on the keyboard to bring that up and it will ask you to select a type of mask. So first up with this image, I would like to add an overall vignette. So I'm going to select a radial gradient. I'm gonna click in the center, draw to the outside, and just kind of center a radial gradient towards the middle of the image. Now I want the adjustment to apply around the outside and currently it's showing me that the adjustment is going to apply in the area that has the red overlay. So to switch that to the outside, I need to swap it by clicking this little invert tick box here. And see now the red is around the outside of the image. That's where the adjustment's going to apply to. So as soon as you start moving the sliders, the overlay will disappear. So I'm going to take the contrast down a bit here and then also take the exposure down and that's going to darken the edges of the image. Now I kind of don't want this adjustment to go over onto Benson. I want Benson to stand out in the image. So I'm also going to subtract the subject from the selection. Now you can't really see the overlays anymore. If you need them back again, you just have to press O on the keyboard. If you want a better representation that's a bit easier to see, you can switch the overlay mode by pressing these three little dots here and changing the mask overlay mode to a different option. I like white on black. And that gives you a really good idea of exactly where the effects are applying to. So as you can see in the white areas is where the image is being darkened and the contrast is being reduced. Now looking at this, I actually want to reduce the area of vignette. I feel like it's a bit big. So I can actually adjust it in this mode, just like this. And then I can kind of change it back if I would like to the color overlay mode and then turn the overlay off entirely by pressing O. Now, if I want to see the effect that's had, I can just click the little eye icon next to the mask here. So that's what we've done so far. Another thing that I would like to do to this is create some lightness in behind Benson. I think some lightness on the background will help him stand out more. So I'm going to create a new mask and this time it's going to be another radial gradient and this one's gonna kind of center on the background at the top. So I wanna lighten this area in behind him. Now again, this time I do not want this adjustment spilling over onto Benson, so I'm going to subtract the subject. And Lightroom generally does a really good job of detecting the subject. So now the mask looks like this. It's missed a couple of little bits on Benson, but I'm not gonna go and fix that up now just because I wanna be nice and quick for you guys. So when you think about the light, it would make sense if the light was sort of coming from behind for the light not to be falling on the side of the little building. This is actually a historical site with little Chinese mining cottages. So with this one here, I would like to subtract with a brush this building here. So I'm just going to go in and paint. I've got auto mask turned off because I want full control over where I'm painting and auto mask is going to try and detect edges, which I don't really want to do. So I want to just kind of take it off 
the building there. So it's only applying to the foliage in the background. Okay, so now my mask looks like this. All right, so this time I'm going to lighten the area. So I'm gonna introduce a little bit of hay. So I'll just press O on the keyboard so I can see the starting point here before I start using the sliders. And then I'm just gonna take the dehaze slider to the left. And I might also just take the exposure up a little. And see how that is now helping Benson to stand out better against that background. I feel that this area at the front here could do with some darkening and also this area here. So I'm going to just grab the brush. I'm going to make a new mask. I'm going to grab the brush. Make sure it's not set to auto mask. I'm going to make it quite a large brush with a big feather. The feather's already all the way up, which is what we want. I'm going to make a nice big brush. I'm going to press O on the keyboard to make sure we're seeing the overlay here. And I'm just going to paint into the areas that I want to kind of darken off a bit. So probably just here. If you need to subtract from that, it's tempting to click the subtract here and actually add another brush layer here. But remember, you can just click erase and erase within the same brush. Make sure auto mask is off. And now I'm just erasing within the same brush level. I don't think we need to darken all the way up there. So that's the area that I think I would like to darken. It's kind of a bit of a U shape. So again, I'm going to press O to turn the overlay off, and then I'm going to take the contrast down and also the exposure down on that sort of area there. And I think we're getting there. We're getting to where we want to be. Let's just click the little toggle next to where it says masks here. So we can turn that off. So that's how it looked before. And this is how it looks now. So another thing we need to do is try and get Benson looking a little bit better. So I'm going to select the subject this time. You can always check to see if it's done a good job, remember, by changing that to white on black. It selected a couple of bits that we don't really want, and you could go in and fix that up by subtracting with a brush, but I'm not going to bother doing that. Now, with Benson, I think I would like to give him just a teeny little bit more exposure. I definitely want to add some texture to bring out the fur texture. I'm going to fill the shadows a little bit on him to get a bit more sort of detail um, in the shadowed areas on him. Maybe take the blacks down and maybe take the whites up to help create some contrast. So what I'm wanting to do is add contrast to him so he stands out against the background. So let's just have a look at that mask off and on. It's very subtle. So one final thing that I think would really help here is darkening off the background even further. So I'm going to this time create a linear gradient from the bottom I'm going to subtract the subject and then again, just take the contrast and exposure down a little bit more. I think that's, I think that's got it. So if we turn all of the masks off and on again, see how it's really shaping the light now. It's really enhancing the image. This is where Lightroom's non-destructive technique for doing this is awesome because if you look at it and go, oh, he kind of looks like he doesn't fit into the scene very well. I think I went a bit too light on the background. You can select that background adjustment and then just back off on that a little bit. So it looks a bit more realistic. I think that's better. So this is the raw image. And then this is the image without the masks. And this is with the masks. So I think that's a great improvement. So I'm gonna go rapid fire through the next ones. So, because you've already kind of seen what I've done with that one. Uh, so this one here, I've definitely wanted to kind of portray the little miner's cottage set into the cliff um, over on the left-hand side here, but the main focus really is the dogs. So I wanna use painting with light to help bring out the dogs more. So first of all, I'm going to add a radial gradient centered around the dogs, inverted, and then I'm just gonna darken off everything else. Now I could subtract the dogs here, but I don't really feel like it's going over onto the dogs too much, so I don't think I'll bother with that. Next, I'm gonna create a new mask. It's gonna be a linear gradient. I'm gonna come up from the bottom because I really feel like that needs to be darkened off in the bottom there. So I'm gonna take the contrast down 
and then also take the exposure down that's really helping to act as a bit of a stopper on the bottom there now I'm going to add another gradient from the left hand side now I could add a linear gradient to this mask but instead I'm going to create a new mask because I think I want the other mask to have some slightly different attributes so I'm going to create a linear gradient from that side and then take the exposure and the contrast down a bit now I'm taking the contrast down because I want to make the dogs the most contrasty thing in the image and so instead of increasing the contrast in the dogs which I may do a little bit I'm actually decreasing the contrast in other parts of the image so I think that's darkened off that area quite nicely so finally I'm just going to select the dog so select subject and it's done a pretty good job in selecting all three dogs again you could go in and fix that up um, if needed and again I'm just going to add some texture fill some shadows a little bit because this dog has some very dark areas possibly warm them up just a touch I really want to bring out those warm tones in them maybe take the whites up a little bit blacks down a touch exposure up now you don't want to edit them too differently to the background because then you're going to get a disconnect between the subject and the background so let's turn all those masks off and on again I am just going to adjust this mask a little bit so it's a bit bigger and a bit taller so this is my main vignette mask and I'm also just going to add another mask linear gradient just to darken off this edge just a touch it's got quite a lot of detail in there maybe even take the clarity down on that because there's quite a bit of you know fine detail in there I don't really want it to overwhelm the dogs okay so no masks masks raw image fully edited right next rapid fire so this is the raw file of this one here this image obviously needs quite a lot of cleaning up I've got some sticks up here to remove there's a bit of a person in here that I'm going to use another image to get rid of and I probably will do quite a bit of tidying up to this as well as kind of lightening off the chest but it's a it's a good start and I'm basically just going to enhance the light so enhance what is here so again I'm going to start off with an overall radial gradient focused around the dog inverted take the contrast down take the exposure down I'm going to add a spotlight on the background with another radial gradient up here make sure I subtract the subject this time because I don't want that lightning effect going over onto the beautiful subject here bonus that's her name isn't she gorgeous um, so I'm going to take the dehaze slider to the left here to sort of lighten up that area and give her a bit of a focal point on the background to justify her looking off into that direction and I'm also going to add a linear gradient from the bottom I really want to darken this off reduce contrast maybe take the clarity and text just down just a touch and then finally a select subject take the whites up take the highlights down because she does actually have a um, quite a very bright bit of white fur on her nose and I'm even going to create another mask here that's just a brush just to try and get her chest a little bit lighter so again auto mask turned off because I want full control over where this goes just that section there and I'm just going to do a bit of shadow filling and maybe take the exposure up and also take the saturation down just a touch so here we go that's before that's after okay next rapid fire this is bonus again beautiful bonus uh, so this time too we've got a bit of extra stuff to do I'm going to get rid of these white areas of the sky and also there's a person over there with some bright clothing I'll get rid of I also have another part of the image that I'm going to add to the bottom um, so the pore isn't so close to the bottom probably get rid of that green grass they're all things that I'm going to do in Photoshop so we're just talking Lightroom here so this is the before this is the after so I've definitely warmed it up a little bit added some contrast I'm going to add a vignette to this one 
So I don't always add this radial filter as a vignette. It's just a really good way to add a custom vignette on images where it suits. There are some images where it doesn't suit, say photos at the beach don't necessarily look great with a vignette, but these sorts of dark moody photos definitely do. So I'm gonna take that down. I'm going to add a linear gradient from the bottom right because I really wanna darken that corner off a lot. And this image is going to respond really well to a spotlight on the background. So I'm going to add another radial gradient on the background, subtract the subject, take dehaze slider down, and maybe exposure just a touch, maybe add some warmth, just a tiny bit of warmth there. So, I mean, there are only three masks that I've added, and here's the difference with just those three masks. Super simple, super easy, really quick way to enhance your images. Last one, okay, so this is the raw file of this one. As you can see, I've warmed it up, added some contrast. I really would like to make bonus stand out. She already does stand out quite well. This was taken at 200 millimeters with an f2.8 lens at f2.8. So there's a really shallow depth of field. The background's a really long way and it's created that lovely soft background. So I want her to stand out, but I don't want her to look like she's a cardboard cutout just stuck on a background. So she does still need to look like she's connected to the background. So again, first up, we're going to add a radial gradient to darken the edges. We can go um, quite small on this one, invert it, take the exposure and the contrast down. I'm going to select the subject. I think that's done a pretty good job there. Let's just check. Yep, that's done a great job. So I'm going to brighten her up a little by filling the shadows, adding exposure, but but I'm also going to do that same adjustment to the ground that she's sitting on. So the ground here, if it's had the same adjustment as her, it kind of connects her to the scene and connects her to the ground. So I'm going to add to this mask, I click add with a brush, and then I'm just going to turn the overlay back on by pressing O so I can see what I'm doing. And then just run this brush from one side to the other along the sharp bit. So along the plane of focus. And then maybe kind of go a little bit bigger in the center. So you can see now she looks a lot more connected with the background. If I turn that brush off, see how she's got a bit of a cardboard cutout look? So this one also is gonna respond really nicely to a radial gradient in behind her. So it looks like there's a bit of a glow sort of coming from behind. It's gonna kind of come down into here. I'll subtract the subject. So I subtract her. If you look at them, what the mask is actually doing though, see how it's coming down underneath her? I don't really want that. So I'm gonna subtract with a brush and just manually remove the foreground because it doesn't make sense for that to be coming all the way through here. I'll just go up into here as well, because I didn't do a great job there. So that's gonna be the shape of that mask. So I'll just turn that back to a color overlay mask and turn the overlay off and just take the dehaze slider to the left. Maybe add some warmth, oh yeah. I think we can add a bit of warmth. Moving that dehaze slider to the left will often result in that area becoming a little cool for whatever reason. So sometimes you do need to add a little bit of temperature adjustment to account for what the dehaze slider is doing. Uh, we can also on this one, maybe just take the clarity down a little directly behind her. It's already quite soft, but it just makes it nice and smooth. So let's take a look and see what we've done with all these masks. See how it's dark in the edges? It's really drawn attention to her in the center. I think we could possibly just add another little linear gradient from the side and then add another linear gradient from the other side and also come up from the bottom just to accentuate that even more. So I'm gonna take the exposure down a little and the contrast down a bit there too. So we're really framing her with the darker light on either side. 
So there we go. Let's have a look. It's the raw file. That's the fully edited file. And this is the difference the masks make to that edit. So hopefully that's been helpful for you. I know I went rapid fire through the last four edits, but I really just wanted to show you how quickly and effectively you can use the masking in Lightroom to paint with light and really enhance your images to the next level. Thanks so much for joining me for this week's editing toolbox. We'll see you next week.